Every year, my boys come to visit me for the summer, and they make a request for a special cake. I give them free reign in designing the cake and choosing what flavors they want, and they always throw me curveballs because they're my boys. And every year, I struggle to rise to the challenge and teach myself generally a whole new set of skills. I am entirely an autodidact in the cake department, which means I have taught myself everything I've learned and everything I currently know. And of course, part of the challenge of my boys' requests is that I live a paleo-primal lifestyle, which means that we do not use refined sugar, we do not use artificial dye stuffs, and of course, a lot of these cakes that they would like are super colorful and require a wide palette of colors that is harder to obtain with natural substances. But I've figured it out. So, watch on to see as I rise to the latest challenge that my youngest child has set for me, that of creating him a Chinook birthday cake. Yes, that's right, Chinook, a specific breed of salmon. Well, let's see what happens. We're going to cover baking the actual cake in a different video. Today's video is going to focus on the challenges of decorating, nay, sculpting this beast of a cake. Let's start with the fondant. Well, for paleo fondant, we're going to need paleo marshmallow, which means I have to make it from scratch. Now, this time I was clever enough to remember to add my food coloring to the warm marshmallow mix before it's whipped up and sets into a solid lump of fondant. Because there's little that is more difficult than trying to mash food coloring into a ton of dense fondant. It's quite an upper arm workout. To achieve this alarming shade of Chinook Red, we're utilizing dried beetroot powder and turmeric today. Added straight into the marshmallow fluff mix, powder and all, no decoction necessary. First thing we have to do is apply our crumb coating to the first layer of the cake. This frosting is a buttercream peanut butter frosting and it's technically not a buttercream it's just a butter frosting I'll explain that maybe in a different video anyway it's made with no refined sugar and it's much less sweet than conventional frosting but it still has a nice body to it so first we apply this layer to the entire cake or rather the entire bottom layer of the cake because the top layer is actually going to be what I call cake play-doh which you may know is cake pop you can see here that I have applied the cake pop to the top layer. It looks kind of lumpy and not particularly appealing, but now we start the sculpting. So basically I treat this just like Play-Doh. It's like being back in preschool. Using my fingers, of course I've washed them. I smooth this into the shape that I want and the heat from my fingers actually helps to cause the butter in the frosting to melt just enough to be malleable. And that's the frosting that's binding these crumbs together. And I just keep tap, tap, tapping and smoothing until I achieve the shape I want. This is an extremely touchy-feely process. And no, that was not an intentional pun, stupid brain. Anywho, it basically requires that you just keep pressing and adding until you've achieved the shape that you feel you want. Now I'm going to fast forward through this a little bit, but here you see I've decided that this fish is just too blocky. It definitely doesn't look like a fish. So I'm going to actually add some cake pop onto the sides and create what I hope will end up looking like a real three-dimensional fish look as though a fish were laying on this platter prepared to be eaten. So I add some cake pop onto the sides and tap it into shape. So here is our tubby Chinook body. Yes, he's not the sleekest Chinook in the world. No fat shaming, please. Um, but I've decided that I'm gonna use a substrate of cake pop for his fin as well, so that the fondant has a solid surface on which to rest. And we're already going to do cake pop for his little molded head. So I need some more cake pop. So I thought I'd take this chance to actually show you how easy this is. Crumbles of cake in your bowl, some frosting, and just start mixing. And the good thing about paleo cake especially is it will just fall apart <laughs> whether you want it to or not. So it actually makes kind of almost the ideal cake for making Play-Doh. And I just 
I mix, mix, mix until it starts to come together. And if I see that not all of the crumbs are actually incorporating in a consistent dough-like manner, then I just add a little more frosting. So this is really a touchy-feely process. And so I wanna, I want it to mold like that and to create a cohesive surface with no crumbs coming off. So that actually seems like it's enough. So now I just have to mix it all up until it's done. We are on to molding the Chinook's head. The Chinook, I swear to God, it seems like God sneezed when he was creating them. This head is so ridiculous. Its eyes in the wrong spot relative to the shape of its body. Its mouth is awkward and I am a perfectionist. So here we go. I am attempting to create this little beast for my son. The things we do for love, eh? So the structural integrity of this little beak is not fantastic on its own since it's hanging over the edge, but I can insert a toothpick. And I'm not the only one who uses such substrates for their decorative cakes. So if you're eating a particularly fancily sculpted cake, you should beware of, um, shall we say, bones that may be supporting it. It is sadly just off camera, but you can see at the top of the screen that I am doing likewise for the fins of the tail. Again, it's protruding over the edge of this platter, so a little extra support is wanted. We are now at the final crumb coating phase. The sculpted Chinook is getting its little, uh, shall we say, undercoat of peanut butter frosting. This will both make the cake more delicious and act as glue for the fondant that we're going to be applying here shortly. This layer does not have to be pretty. It is purely practical in nature. The more the better. I have now sculpted some of his little fins and we're adding some of the peanut butter frosting there again to add flavor and moisture, but also to act as that natural glue for the fondant. I'm just going to use my fingers to work into some of those tighter spaces where the offset spatula just can't really reach. Time to roll out the fondant. I'm actually utilizing activated black charcoal powder here to create that um, dusting effect of black that happens on the scales of the Chinook. And it's actually going pretty well. I'm, I'm pretty happy how this is working. Again, I'm just making this up as I go, really. It's just one big experiment. Now this fondant, as I mentioned, is made without any refined sugar and uh, very much less of a sweetener than it might normally have. And I didn't add any glycerin or the usual uh, chemicals that are added to fondant to give it a certain stretch. So there could be challenges, but this time around, I seem to have achieved the right amount of elasticity with this fondant. It's a heart set of heart cookie cutters with a little heart cookie cutter. And I think this will actually work perfectly for layering the scales. Here we go, laying the scales on one by one. I'm overlapping them about halfway up the heart or maybe a third way up the heart. And that, that really seems to be creating exactly the look that I would like. I'm, I'm extremely gratified and frankly shocked that this is turning out so well. You can see here how the frosting acts as a glue and it's, it's again, working really well. Yay, I'm just making this up as I go, really. Don't listen to a thing I say. Here she comes, the finished Chinook, beautiful and hubby. We've applied her face and her fins and her eye consists of peanut butter frosting with a tiny bit of black fondant. I've used a pastry brush to apply the black activated charcoal in a streaky pattern onto her fins to replicate the same streaky pattern one sees on the original Chinook. I have to say, I'm pretty happy how this turned out. Well, I thought I was done, but Pride cometh before the fall, and my hubris has been struck down. For I looked at our beautiful Chinook and realized that she could never swim, and that she would surely die in the wild were she not eaten first. 
by some predator. Anyway, so she needs a couple of more fins. So back to the fondant board for me. Here I am cutting out the last remaining fins that she will require for her brief life as a Chinook cake. I have a feeling she will not last long in this house. All cut out. That looks good. And I'm going to take my knife now. And now you can see how I scored the lines into the fin to recreate that uh, ribbed fin look. I like to believe that everything happens for a reason, and I didn't get video of me painting these fins before, but now I have a chance to record it for your benefit. This is me using a solution of beet powder and water with a pastry brush to just brush the red on, and then I dip it, as you saw, in the charcoal powder to create that combination effect. And the nice thing is that the charcoal powder fills in those scored lines that I made. So there we go. And now on to the Chinook's body, to the spot that will enable her to swim if she were to survive this evening's experience, which she won't. So I'm just going to lift up this scale and slide it in and count on that peanut butter frosting to do its job. And it does. Yay, victory. At the risk of sounding like a broken record, I am just as pleased as pudding at how this turned out. Um, here you can see sort of how I scaled the underside as well. So it really looks like a nice three-dimensional fish. My son helped me a little bit with the scales and the head, and he did a really brilliant job. And there I am looking like a miner's daughter covered in charcoal. So... I just finished this damn cake and now we're gonna cut it. I feel like we should wait at least a week before we do anything to this cake because it took me a long time to make. So now, after I've made this anatomically correct Chinook cake with all the right fins, this guy could swim in water even if he's a little tubby with his flicted mouth and his weird eye in the wrong part of his head, we're now gonna cut it. So let's do this. Okay. So my birthday boy, disturbingly wants the Chinook's head. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is the sad corpse of our Chinook. I thought I would take this opportunity to give you an idea of what you can do with your leftover frosting and why I always make more than I need. So to seal my cake and keep it moist, I'm actually gonna take the leftover frosting and patch up the bloody stump of the fish's body of my tubby Chinook's body. And every time I cut a piece, I will then use the rest of the frosting to seal up whatever is left. And this will help keep your cake nice and moist. So, thus ends the tale of the Chinook cake challenge. I hope you've learned some good lessons today, boys and girls. Stay creative. Hmm, what's in the loot case? <laughs> <laughs> Are you comfy in there? Hmm? You're not going to look at the camera? He's a well-trained thespian. <laughs> <laughs>